Hi everyone, welcome to the Bioinformatics Code channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about RNA-seq data analysis. So let's get started. Now, RNA-seq is a sequencing technology that is used to identify and also quantify transcripts or RNA or genes, depending on what you want at the end of the day. And so for this talk, I'll focus on the steps that you have to follow in order to get the data that you generate analyzed. That is what we are going to do here. So let's get started. So with the data, I am going to focus on the data in the fast scale formats. And that's the raw reads. That's what I'm going to focus on. And this talk is also appropriate for situations where you have a reference genome available for the organism of interest or the organism under study. So take note of that. So that's what you have to do. So let's start. So once you have your data, the first thing you have to do is to perform quality control. It's very, very important. Quality control will help you to get a quality distribution of your data and it will also help to improve the overall quality of the data. Quality control is important because it will help you to get results that are reproducible and results that have a higher statistical power or results that have higher statistical power. So that's what you need to understand here. And so with the quality control, I'll make mention of two things here the inspection aspect and then the trimming aspect. Now, the inspection aspect is to help you to uh, get uh, information about the quality and not just about the quality, but general information of your data. But quality is, is a key component here. And so there are a number of tools that can help you to do that. And one popular tool is the FastQC tool. So with FastQC, what it does is that it performs some analysis on the data and then it generates um, plots and visualizations that you can uh, use to understand the data and get information about the quality. And then maybe get some additional features such as maybe read lengths and then um, presence of adapters and then presence or absence of um, overrepresented sequences, etc. So these are things you can do with FastQC. And these are things that will help you to understand your data better. So it's important you do that. Now, trimming is also another aspect of quality control. So trimming helps you to remove reads that are of low quality. It will also help you to remove adapters. And so in general, trimming will help to improve the quality of the reads that you have. It's not always so, but it's important to do the trimming if you think it's really important. And that is why it is also important that you assess your reads, you inspect the reads that you have, you inspect the quality before and then after trimming. And so that you'll be able to decide which of these reads you should use for the downstream analysis. So it's important you also do that. So that is it for quality control. So let's move to the next activity and that is aligning or alignment or some also say uh, mapping. I mean, we use this words interchangeably, but the point here is what I want you to focus on. So the purpose of um, aligning is to um, help you to identify the locations or regions in the genome where um, the identified transcripts map to. Okay, you need to know where they originate from and that is why we do the mapping. Okay, it's important uh, you get that. So um, in order to do the mapping, you need to get a reference genome and you also need to have your FASTQ reads, which I've made mention of. And so there are tools that will take these reads and then scan um, through your sequence, I mean the reference sequence, and look at regions which um, are unique um, or that's, um, that's the, the reads map uniquely to. And then that is where it will map the reads to. And then and that, that gives you the location of that particular transcript or gene in the reference genome. It's important you also uh, do that. So that is for the um, aligning or the genome mapping. There are a number of tools available like HiSAT, STAR, etc. But uh, these are things you can just check online and look at what works best for you. And of course, you also need to factor in the um, sequencing technology. So um, your reads, are they long reads or are they short reads? Are they paired end or are they single end reads? These are things you have to factor in order to choose the appropriate um, aligner. So take note of that. Now, after aligning, you get um, the alignment file 
and you also need to sort the file okay it's important to do that so sorting i think um, i mostly use high starts for doing my alignments and so uh, for high starts um, after aligning you sort uh, the next thing is to sort by chromosome and by position and that's i do that using some tools i think some tools is very popular so it should work in um, all situations there are a number of um, sorting schemes um, sorting by coordinates, sorting by name, by a chromosome position. And so you just need to look at what is appropriate for your work. It's important you do that. So just look at what works best for you and then um, use that. Again, there's nothing like one size fits all. So this talk is supposed to serve as a guide for you. So please take note of that. Okay. So after sorting, you will generate your BAM files and then what you do next is to assemble the transcripts. And so with the assembly of the transcripts, it can be de novo or it can be reference guided. Again, there are tools to do um, the alignments um, using um, both um, approaches, de novo or reference guide. So look at the tools available and look at what works best for you. Okay, so what I recommend that before you do the analysis, you need to make sure you read some publications and papers and tutorials and look at what has been used and decide whether it fits into your work or not. So it's important that you do that as well. Yes, so after doing the transcript assembly, it is important to also do some form of exploration. So this exploration I'm talking about is um, comparing the assembled transcripts that you have to the reference and genome, the annotations in the reference genome, so that you'll be able to know be able to have an idea of what transcripts have been identified and whether there are even novel transcripts or not in your data. So you need to be able to check that. Tools like GFF Compare can help you do that. So just check that tool out. Now, the next thing to do is to estimate the abundance of your genes or your transcripts. So I uh, will say um, estimate abundance. Let's put it that way. And so here, some will also say um, gene quantification or transcript quantification. They all mean the same thing here. So we are basically looking at how much of these transcripts or genes are, okay, in your data. That is what this process will help you to achieve. So what you get at the end of the day is called a read count, okay, or the gene abundance. I mean, there are a number of names that are used for them, but... Uh, it, it's fine. I mean, just look at what uh, works best for them. Just use that particular term. So, what you get is, is the gen count. That's what I prefer to call it. And so, the next thing you have to do is to normalize this gen count or read count. Yeah, some will say read count, some will say gen count, but it's fine. And um, what you have to do is to normalize this count, okay, this data that you have. And the reason why we normalize is to be able to do a comparison among uh, the transcripts or among the genes. So let's look at this situation here. Let's say we have gene A and let's say we have gene B. Gene A has a longer length than gene B. And so what will happen is that in the data, in the reads, we will, we will have more reads mapping um, to gene A than gene B. And so if you look at its phase value, you may think that there are higher levels of gene A than gene B, but that may not be true. And so the length may affect this interpretation. That is why we normalize so that we'll be able to account for situations like this. That is why normalization is also very, very important here. Otherwise, you may have results that are biased. So that's what you need to um, look at here. So there are a number of tools and methods available for normalization, but these are things that I will cover in future tutorials, so take note of that. So after normalizing the data, then you do the differential expression analysis. Okay, it's important to do that. And let me also chip in that after normalizing the data, some um, in some studies they will use these counts, these read counts here, and to do some uh, machine learning work, which I think I've covered one to two, and that you can check it out. And those that will proceed to do the differential expression analysis. So these are two um, things here. So the machine learning is just something I checked, but our focus today is on differential expression analysis. So let's proceed with that. So 
once you have your normalized read count, you perform differential expression analysis. So this analysis is to help you to identify genes or transcripts that are differentially expressed. Okay, so when we talk about differentially expressed, we are looking at um, up regulated or down regulated um, transcripts or genes. Okay, and so usually with the RNA seq experiments, you have case and control. And so you, this particular uh, result will tell you if um, maybe case and control whether there are some genes that um, have a high level or that have had their expressions increase okay that others and whether there are some genes or transcripts which um, now have um, levels decrease or we call them down regulated okay so that is what you are going to achieve after a differential expression analysis okay so with the differential expression analysis a number of statistical tests are performed and so at the end of the day uh, you get what you call log um, fold changes or fold changes some will give it to you in the log form and then you also have p values and you have q values and so uh, using these values here you depend on the threshold you set then you'll be able to identify those genes or transcripts that are differentially expressed i mean uh, significantly that's why the p values and q values are there so these values here uh, based on the threshold you set will help you to identify genes or transcripts that are significantly expressed whereby the expression could be up regulation or down regulation so it's important to get that, that aspect as well with the differential expression analysis i think almost all the tools are in r and so with that particular aspect you may not be able to escape from r <laughs> unfortunately that's the case now so it just gets the r packages and then use them edge r um, the sick bog on etc so all these packages are in r and so you may have to check them out and look at what works best for you so that's the differential expression analysis so once you have your uh, transcript or genes um that you consider to be differentially expressed the next thing you do is the gene enrichment analysis and so this enrichment analysis will help you to um, know what roles uh, these genes or transcripts are playing in the biological system and so you you, you do um, pathway analysis or network analysis and you also uh, look at gene ontology and then you may also want to look at um, protein protein interactions and then etc so these are things you do after you've identified the genes or transcript that are differentially expressed so it's important to look at all these things first so after getting the information here you also need to visualize the results and so with the visualization of the differentially expressed um, analysis the results from that analysis you could uh, look at box plots heat maps um, car plots ma plots etc there are a number of plots and visualizations available so depend on the information you want to tell depend on what you want to present to the world then you look at the appropriate um, visualizations or plots that would be good and then you use them um, to generate the outputs um, for your work so that is important here so that is it for that is it in a nutshell with um, rna seq analysis and i think if there is any other information that's my viewers you think i omitted or should be part you can just put it in the comment section and we can all have some discussions on it. We are all learning and every day is a school day for us all. So that will be all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next session. Goodbye.